Hi everyone, I'm Owen Liu, and today I'll be presenting on a method that we've put together, um, and the presentation is called Glory's Oceanic Climate Change Projections Using Delta Method Downscaling. Uh, <clears throat> and first of all, I have uh, not worked on this alone. I've had a lot of help, um, and there's some specific people that deserve uh, thank yous right up front, uh, including uh, many of the awesome oceanographers I've worked with, including Mayor Pozo Buil, Mike Jaycox, uh, Jerome Feichter, uh, and Sam Sidlecki. Uh, my colleagues on the California Current uh, Atlantis, um, including Isaac Kaplan and Pierre-Yves, uh, Hern Vaughn, um, and Albi Rovellini, uh, who's been working on Gulf of Alaska, but also has been quite coordinated with us uh, working on California Current. And I'm sure you know, you will know these guys if you don't know them already, uh, and they'll, they'll be presenting in, in other slots today uh, and over the next couple of days. Um, I'd also like to thank my funding from the uh, National Research Council, uh, the Packard Foundation, um, and Microsoft Azure for uh, helping us with computing. Um, and finally, <clears throat> there's lots of other people to thank, um, including many more people at CSIRO, uh, NOAA, um, and others that have, that have helped guide me um, and provide data and other things for, for this project. Uh, so the motivation for this uh, is that we are in the in California, or really we're in Seattle, but uh, we're rebuilding um, an Atlantis model for the California current ecosystem, uh, which you've uh, likely already heard some about from Isaac. Um, and our goal really is to simulate ecosystem dynamics under century scale climate change. Um, we really need uh, reliable oceanography to force uh, the, the California current model. Uh, and the existing forcing we have is static, meaning that uh, every year, uh, every simulated year uses the same oceanography. And our challenge then uh, is to find or build uh, an oceanography product for Atlantis uh, that is dynamic in that it varies uh, intra and or interannually that it represents uh, projected climate change out to the year 2100. That's uh, our project goal. Uh, and we wanted to cover the existing California current uh, Atlantis model domain. Uh, you'll see why that's relevant in a minute. And we want, we'd like it to be as high resolution, sort of spatially and temporally as practically possible. And as you might imagine, or as you might have experienced in your own regions, uh, it's quite difficult to meet all these criteria simultaneously. Uh, so I'll go through a, a couple of options that, that we were thinking about um, before getting to uh, the meat of my presentation about this Glory's uh, downscaling delta method. So the existing oceanography, as I said, uh, is looped year after year. Um, so it's not projected, uh, but, you know, it's, it's already, uh, it covers the Atlantis domain um, and it's high resolution enough uh, that We've used it in, in previous versions of California Current Atlantis. Um, <clears throat> another option is to use uh, the Earth's, these sort of large global climate model, um, Earth system model outputs directly. And they sort of look like uh, this that you see in the image on the right. Uh, and, you know, these are, these are global, uh, they're projected, um, they can cover our whole domain, but they're, as you can see, they're quite blocky, um, usually uh, one degree resolution or, or less. Um, so it's not quite uh, good enough for, for our application or not ideal, uh, especially you can see along that coastal uh, margin of California, it's really jagged and, and we don't get uh, any good resolution uh, on the shelf or near the coast, uh, which is really important for uh, many of the dynamics in the ecosystem model. Uh, as many of you know, we have a, a, a wonderful uh, ROMS product uh, that Mayor Pozo Buil and Mike Jaycox and their team uh, developed uh, that is projected. Um, it's 
high resolution, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't quite cover uh, the entire domain of our Atlantis model. You can see in the image on the right, uh, we sort of what we've been calling the tails, that sort of north and south, south ends of the model um, are not covered by ROMs. Um, and so and so that presents a problem with uh, with using ROMs to, to force all of uh, our Atlantis model. Uh, Glories uh, is a product uh, from Mercator Ocean in, in Toulouse, um, and it's high resolution. They have it for the entire globe, um, so it covers our Atlantis domain, uh, but it's not projected. Um, it go only goes from 1993 to 2018. And so <clears throat> looking at these various options, uh, we came up with uh, the idea that maybe uh, we could use a combination of the glories, the glories model uh, and the global or system models uh, to create a product that meets all of these criteria uh, simultaneously. And uh, for the next few slides, I'm going to go into uh, pretty decent detail about uh, how we did this. So <clears throat> glories is the global ocean reanalysis and simulation. Um, as I said, it's put together by um, a team in the EU, in France. Um, it has a, a quarter degree resolution, at least the product that we used, um, and 75 vertical levels. Uh, the time frame is 1993 to 2018. Uh, and for anyone interested, these are the, the actual models, the actual model products uh, that we use for the physics and the biogeochemistry. <clears throat> um, and then we linked these to uh, the same Earth system models then as those that are in uh, uh, the California Current ROMs uh, model. And for those interested in, in seeing what that looks like, um, I would refer you to uh, Mayer's paper, uh, Posa Buil et al. 2021 in Frontiers of Marine Science. Um, all the models, which we'll call shorthand, uh, the GFDL, IPSL, and Hadley models. Um, the ones that we used are all uh, based on the RCP 8.5 uh, emission scenario. Um, and as you can see here, uh, these details aren't super important, but uh, they all have you know slightly different uh, grid structures um, and uh, resolutions. <clears throat> So in this method, uh, we have three main biogeochemical variables, um, dissolved silicate, dissolved oxygen, and nitrate, um, as well as uh, a bunch of physical variables, including temperature, salinity, uh, the oceanographic uh, currents, U and V, as well as sea surface height. Um, and as probably most of you know, uh, the, the really the key um, variables to drive the Atlantis oceanography are uh, temperature, salinity, and uh, U and V, or the, the currents or flows of water. Um, these other um, variables like dissolved oxygen, nitrate, um, and sea surface height uh, will still could still be useful for, for other parts of the model, um, just not directly uh, necessarily into the, like the forcing uh, PRM files and things like this. Um, the historical data for glories and ESMs um, have slightly different resolutions. Glories is uh, monthly from 1993 to 2018, at least that's the, the version that we used. And the Earth system models uh, are, have monthly resolution for the physical variables, uh, annual for the biogeochemistry variables, um, <clears throat> and they go from 1976 to 2005. Um, so now I'll, I'll talk about the, the general method that we used, uh, and then I'll go uh, sort of visually through each step without uh, hopefully boring you with, with too many technical uh, or coding details. But our general idea here um, is to use, take advantage of the projected um, <clears throat> Earth system models, uh, but try to get them onto the uh, resolution and the grid of glories so that uh, we can um, <clears throat> make the, the product uh, higher resolution, um, but also projected. Uh, 
So what we do first is we uh, calculate a uh, climatology um, for each uh, Earth, each of the three Earth system models for each variable. Then we calculate uh, what we call a delta, which means that for each future year, uh, we find the difference between that year and the uh, historical average or mean climatology. Then we do the same uh, for glories. We calculate a historical climatology. Then we convert these uh, in step four. We convert the Earth system model deltas uh, onto the glories grid. And then finally, uh, we add the delta from the Earth system models uh, to the glories climatology. So in this way, we're taking the the year-over-year -year differences uh, from the Earth system model and then applying them to the glories climatology. Uh, for those of you that are interested in, in more details or sharing code, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I, did, I coded this up in R, um, but making heavy use of uh, command line climate data operators, uh, which, are, which are really great for working uh, with NetCDF or large gridded data. Um, so to say a little bit more in, in detail about what, what we did here, so uh, we calculated a climatology uh, for both the Earth system models uh, and the Glories model. And so this means in three dimensions, so uh, sort of latitude, longitude, and depth, uh, we find the means for every grid cell and depth layer um, using, you know, the main CDO, CDO command we use here um, is this year month mean. Um, and as I said, this goes from 1976 to 2005 for the three Earth system models, again, GFDL, IPSL, and Hadley, and 1993 to 2018 uh, for the Glories climatology. So then <clears throat> we create these Earth system model deltas by subtracting the climatology from each projected year. Um, <clears throat> Here we we have we've done it a couple of different ways. Uh, there we wanted to try um, both a additive um, and a multiplicative delta. So for a multiplicative delta, we would uh, divide uh, the projected years by the climatology, so we get a proportional difference uh, rather than an uh, an additive difference. We've stuck we've stuck with the um, additive difference uh, for now, but uh, it could be flexible depending on um, you know, your needs and interests. So uh, then we interpolate these uh, projected deltas uh, onto the glories grid. And as you saw a few slides ago, each Earth system model has a slightly different grid structure. But um, so we interpolate each horizontally using four, uh, the four nearest neighbors. So for each grid cell you find, or for each uh, grid cell that you're trying to interpolate to, find the four nearest neighbors uh, and then they're sort of bilinearly interpolated uh, with distance weighting. Uh, depth was interpolated linearly uh, uh, from the ESM depth layers onto the Glory's uh, 75 vertical levels uh, and there, the, there are the CDO commands uh, that we use for this if people are interested. Um, as a final step we uh, add the grid converted deltas. So remember, these are the differences from the Earth system models uh, converted or interpolated onto the Glories grid. And then we simply add those to the Glories climatology um, using the CDO command uh, year month add or year month multiply if uh, we use the multiplicative delta. And that kind of gives us um, our, our final product um, when we add the delta to the climatology, that should give us a projected product uh, on the Glories grid. Uh, just a few things uh, to keep in mind here. Um, obviously, I've uh, sort of smoothed over a lot of the, the kind of hiccups along the way that you might run into. Um, you know, things that I've learned along the way is, you know, to put in lots of checks, kind of check each step, see if it's producing something uh, intelligible um, or practical um, to see if there are uh, features that you know to be um, 
you know, important features of your local oceanography, see if those are represented still uh, sort of through all of these levels of interpolation and downscaling. Uh, it's important to keep track of time, <laughs> uh, time being, you know, what year you're at, um, the time step. Um, so, you know, we, we had a little bit of a mix and match between sort of annual and monthly climatologies. So you want to make sure that um, you're sort of tracking those in the in the right way, um, and units. Uh, we had a couple of uh, we had a couple of instances where the unit of a particular variable uh, was different um, in the Earth system models or uh, versus the Glories model, um, and that's easy enough to fix as long as you catch it and pay attention. Um, and finally, you know, something I've learned along the way uh, is that processing efficiency um, and handling sort of just computer processing memory uh, is tough here. Um, and so I did a lot of kind of splitting files uh, into individual years um, and parallel using parallel processing uh, rather than trying to take a huge, you know, five or 10 gigabyte uh, file and, and kind of force it through um, because get a lot of get a lot of crashes that way. So our final product uh, for this uh, Glories downscaling delta method um, are monthly oceanographic projections uh, for 2006 to 2100 uh, on the Glories grid. Uh, as I said, there's three different types of projections for the three different uh, RCP 8.5 Earth system models, GFDL, IPSL, and Hadley. And for the eight uh, physical and biogeochemical variables, um, that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, this is a, a you know a little bit what they look like. Um, so this is the output for the Glories IPSL um, Delta product um, in 2050 and 2100, and and this is something you could do is just um, map these out. Um, this is uh, near the surface, um, and you can see, as one might expect. Uh, that you know, we're gonna get redder and hotter uh, by the end of the century, um, and you know this looks like it's at least uh, an intelligible um, an output. Um, <clears throat> here's another example uh, from the same projection, uh, where the darker blues are uh, greater uh, negative change uh, in. Uh, oxygen, this is oxygen at 150 meters depth. Um, and so you can see from the combination of the last slide and this one uh, that we expect in the California current in general, uh, we expect warming uh, and deoxygenation. Um, so we've done, uh, this is still in progress, but we've done a little bit of validation, just trying to compare some of these Delta method products uh, to other um, other products or other projected um, oceanography that we might have. Um, so these are a couple of comparisons uh, to the Posa Wheel et al. Uh, ROMS paper uh, that I mentioned before. So uh, to, to calculate these, I, you know, I sliced Glory, the Glory's product to be the same domain as ROMS, and then we split uh, on the top between uh, north and south of 39 degrees latitude. Um, and the different uh, solid lines here are the different uh, Earth system model uh, products. And so you can see uh, when comparing our Glory's ESM product on the right to the Posa Wheel et al. published uh, ROMS model on the left, um, that we get uh, relatively similar dynamics, um, at least the, the trends and the spread. So the difference between the three models uh, seem similar. Uh, in, and in some places, we seem to potentially have bias, or if not bias, um, some difference uh, from the Posa Wheel et al. Uh, work. Uh, for example, you could see that in, in that uh, southern region, uh, uh, south of 39 degrees latitude, um, you know, the mean uh, sea surface temperature seems to be uh, about a degree and a half uh, uh, colder on average than than in the ROMS model. <clears throat> um, you could do the same. This is again oxygen at 150 meters depth, um, and these look uh, quite quite similar. 
Um, and so, you know, doing these these multiple checks for different variables, different spatial regions, um, and comparing to products that that we already have um, is a good way to kind of start to gain confidence that the that this uh, delta method um, is producing something um, useful. So lastly, I want to talk about um, a couple of the ways that we've used this product so far and will continue to. Uh, the most obvious um, is to produce these direct forcing files for the Atlantis model. Um, as I said a few slides ago, uh, the main variables we're using for this are temperature, salinity, um, and the UNV uh, components of um, currents or, fl or water flows. Um, for this, uh, you definitely want to see the talk uh, by Albi Rovellini. Uh, he has a couple of different talks, um, one on Atlantis translation. So that would be for those of you interested in sort of the next step, how do we take this um, gridded oceanography product um, and actually um, make it into uh, a product that is on the scale of the Atlantis polygons that we can actually use uh, directly in, in the Atlantis model. So if you're interested in that translation, uh, see Albi's talk. Uh, we can also use these outputs uh, to force species distribution models, um, which we've done in for the California current for groundfish. Uh, so in a separate uh, set of methods, I'm um, using uh, the SDMTMB software package um, to produce, a, a, along with this Glory's Oceanography, um, to project groundfish distributions uh, out to the year 2100. And we've used um, this Glory's product, or are planning to, for similar sorts of species distribution models for zooplankton, um, for some coastal pelagic species, uh, and for some highly migratory species. Um, and for, the, for more on these, um, Definitely uh, see Albi's talk. He's giving two talks, one on the Atlantis translation that I had just mentioned, um, and one on SDMTMB. Um, and then uh, Pierre-Yves Hernvan is giving a talk on SDMs for uh, CPS uh, species. So, you know, one question uh, that we're curious about um, is whether this sort of delta method downscaling using the global glories product and the global uh, earth system models uh, would be applicable in other geographies uh, glories and the and the esm projections you know are both global like i said but we need a validation of this method in other geographies if um, all of you <laughs> Uh, or others are, you know, are interested or feel like you need a projected oceanography product and a, a, a locally uh, developed one is not available. Um, we're lucky in the California current that we have uh, a wealth of sort of comparison data sets for sort of both historical and, and some projected products um, that other regions may not. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see how, how this method might apply in other places. Uh, and finally, some, some discussion points for the group. Um, interested in, in, as I said, that it generalizing the method. So, you know, is it applicable or, or needed uh, in, your, in your region or would you find it useful? Um, one thing is we're thinking about is how can we better capture sort of uncertainty? I think this is a larger question for Atlantis in general, but um, for just this sort of oceanography product, um, you know, we're still struggling to figure out uh, how to represent uncertainty um, and or is there a, a need for, for uh, bias correction? Um, finally, uh, our, appro our approach here um, assumes that the fine spatial structure so oceanographic, you know, fine um, uh, spatial structure uh, due to, you know, small eddies or jets or things. Um, and we're assuming that, that, that those things that are represented in the historical glories product uh, will be retained in the future, right? Because we're just taking the differences, uh, projected differences and applying them to the all the pattern um, and climatology uh, from glories. And, 
you know, this may or may not be a, a valid assumption. Um, and so we're in other global regions. Um, we're curious if this seems reasonable uh, or if there are uh, large shifts in these sorts of features um, expected uh, in the future. And so I'll leave it there. Um, thank you all for listening, and I look forward to your feedback.